What's up guys, Ross here. Welcome to today's video in which we are going to be taking a look at two limited edition versions of existing models from D'Angelico's Deluxe Solid Body range, the Deluxe Brighton and the Deluxe Atlantic. Now, you might have assumptions about what these guitars are made out of and what they're going to sound like based on their body shapes and their pickup configurations, but I think their spec sheets will surprise you. And before we get into all of the specs, these guitars are pretty much identical. You know, body shape aside, obviously, they're pretty much identical in terms of specs. The only difference that I could tell between the two is the actual wood that's used to build the body. So the Atlantic, which is a single cut, has a basswood body and the Brighton, the double cut model, has a swamp ash body, but other than that, they're very similar. So both guitars have a set through neck joint and the neck is a, it's a fairly thin C shape, I would say. It's made out of maple and it has a walnut stripe running through the middle. The fingerboard is ebony and the fretboard radius is 14 inches, which is quite flat for what I'm used to anyway. The scale length for both guitars is 24 and 3 quarter inches. The pickups are Seymour Duncan Seth Lover A4s in the neck and bridge, which I believe are an exclusive collaboration between Seymour Duncan and D'Angelico for these limited edition models. Both guitars come with 500k pots, two volumes, two tones, and the tone knobs are actually push-pull coil splits. Of course, there's a three-way toggle switch, gold hardware, as you can see, including a tunematic bridge with a stop bar tailpiece, and Grover Super Rotomatic Locking Tuners, which is nice. That's going to make your string changes a lot easier. But what makes these guitars limited edition is mainly the finishes. So for each model, the Atlantic and the Brighton, for each of those guitars, you have three unique limited edition satin finishes to choose from. And these are limited to 50 worldwide per guitar and per finish. So the Atlantic that I've been sent is in matte rose gold. And the Brighton that they sent me is in a matte wine finish, which looks really, really nice. Um, I dig this. The other finish that you can get these guitars in, which you'll see on their website, is matte black. Now there are some other differences between these limited edition models and the regular Deluxe Atlantic and Brighton guitars, including things like the body woods, the, the fingerboards, and the pickups. So the normal versions have Seymour Duncan DA-59 humbuckers, whereas these, as I said earlier, have the exclusive collaboration pickups between Seymour Duncan and D'Angelico, which are the Seth Lover A4s. And the A4 in the name refers to the type of magnet used in the pickups, Alnico 4. Now, although their body designs and pickup configurations might look familiar, I have to tell you from my own personal experience of playing these guitars through my own setup for the past couple of weeks, they, they really do not sound like or feel like the types of guitars you might compare them to. They feel lighter both in terms of sound and how they actually physically feel to play. They don't resonate in the same way that a Les Paul might and the tone is much less bass dominant and much more mid-range focused. There's almost a, a telly-like twanginess to the bridge pickups on these guitars, and that's without the coil splits engaged. There's a nice amount of twang to these humbuckers. <laughs>
general i'd say that there's a lot less low end in uh, the tone than, than what you might expect and feel free to attack me in the comments for this if uh, if you want to but i believe that that's at least got something to do with the types of wood that these guitars are made from now i've never been a big fan of coil splitting humbuckers personally that's just me but would that stop me from buying these guitars? No, it's just an option that is there and I, I don't have to use it if I don't want to. But that being said, the coil splits on these guitars do sound really good. And I've been playing around with the, the coil split tones using a compressor and you can get some really nice funky tones with the coil splits engaged. So you're probably wondering what the playability is like on these guitars. How nice are they to actually play? Well, the guitars have a nice satin finish all over, so the neck feels very, very smooth to play. I really like ebony fretboards, can't go wrong with that for me personally anyway. The frets are, the fret wire is medium jumbo, which is very comfortable for me. I believe that's what I've got on my Strat, so I'm used to that size of fret. And the fretwork itself, is very well done, I have to say. Um, there's nothing sticking out on the sides of the fretboards. That's one of the first things I'll actually check on any guitar that I'm trying out. I'll run my hand up and down the sides of the, the fretboard to see and feel if there's anything sticking out. And that's not the case with these guitars. The frets feel very smooth. Yeah, I have no complaints there. Nice satin finished neck with decent fretwork and an ebony fretboard. It's hard to go wrong with that really. Personally, I wouldn't mind a slightly thicker neck, but that's just me. Tuning stability is pretty damn good for these guitars, I have to say. Um, I was surprised when I got my Premier DC, which is sitting over there. You've probably seen that guitar in a lot of videos on my channel if you've been here for a while. If you're new, you'll have no idea what I'm talking about. Um, but over there, I've got my... In fact, let me just go and grab it. So this is my personal D'Angelico Premier DC that I got last year. And it's the same headstock design as, as these guitars. I think this headstock is actually a little bit bigger than those, but three and three headstocks. So three tuners on one side, three tuners on the other. And of course, there's a bit of a break angle, as you can see um, when the strings pass through the nut, which on most other guitars that I've played with that break angle and this headstock design, the three and three, on most other guitars that I've played that have that, you typically encounter a lot of tuning issues, particularly on the D and G strings because of that break angle. But when I got this guitar last year, I was really surprised. I was shocked actually at how well the tuning held up, despite the fact that it, it has that break angle. Um, and I kind of feel the same way about these limited edition models. They have that same break angle, but the tuning stability is pretty damn good. 
Um, especially considering the fact that I'm used to playing 11 to 48 on all of my guitars. Um, and these came strung up with 10 to 46. So I'm digging in a bit harder, but they're still holding up pretty well. Now, one very minor issue with these guitars is that they do feel a little bit headstock heavy. And that's something you'll notice when you're playing sitting down. Um, not so much when you're actually holding the guitar and playing it, but when you let go, you will feel the guitar sort of dip down, which is not a huge issue, but worth pointing out. And this could be to do with the fact that the bodies are actually quite thin. Um, definitely thinner than what I was expecting anyway. But you could view that as a good thing because I feel anyway that I could play uh, a four hour wedding set, say, with this guitar and get to the end of that, a long, long set, and not feel like my back's hurting. So if you're someone that's gonna actually be gigging on the regular and you maybe have back issues or, or any sort of back pain, um, I think these would be a good option because they do feel quite light. The Atlantic, the single cut model, feels a little bit heavier. Um, I've never actually weighed a guitar in my life, so I don't know how many pounds these are, but uh, they, they feel fairly light to me. I feel like I could gig with these guitars very comfortably. And if upper fret access is a priority for you, I was gonna say that this would be the obvious choice. You know, it, it's quite easy to get up to the, I mean, it's effortless to get up to the higher frets with this uh, deluxe Brighton model. Um, but that being said, the Atlantic, I mean, both of these guitars have a nice contoured neck heel. So it's definitely uh, much more comf comfortable accessing the higher frets on this guitar than it is for say, you know, a standard Les Paul or a 335, for example. So these are both really nice guitars, I have to say. They retail for $14.99, that's US dollars. And with that price tag in mind, I feel like they are best suited to the type of player who is, is maybe a working professional that doesn't have the budget to spring for a boutique handmade custom shop level guitar, but is looking to spend their money on something that has uh, premium components um, like locking tuners, an ebony fretboard, uh, gold hardware, aftermarket pickups. You know, these have the Seymour Duncan Seth Lover A4s, which are um, limited to these guitars only, I believe. Like I said earlier, they're an exclusive collaboration. You've got things like coil splits, which offer, as you can imagine, uh, a very versatile range of tones, things like 500k pots. If all of those things matter to you and you're looking for a solid, reliable guitar to gig with, then I'd say both of these guitars are great options. As for which one to go for, I mean, that's personal preference really. It's really down to what body shape you prefer. Um, I think I prefer the look of the Brighton personally, but that's just me. Um, you might prefer the Atlantic or you might actually want a guitar with a basswood body as opposed to swamp ash. And like I said, they're both uh, solid options if you're, if you're looking for something nice to gig with. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you want to learn more about D'Angelico guitars, I've left links in the description box below. If you enjoyed this video and you found it helpful, then please do give it a like, share it with a friend who might be looking to buy a new guitar. Um, if you wanna see new videos from me in the future, then click the subscribe button as well as the little bell for notifications every time I upload a new video. And that about does it for today's video, guys. Thank you so much again for watching and I will see you in the next one.